Hiking gear can be extremely expensive and is yours lasting as long as it should? Do you think you're taking good care of it? You might be surprised. Today, I'm uncovering common mistakes people make with their gear and how to fix them. Are you destroying your gear? Stay tuned to save your gear and your wallet. Hi everyone, welcome back. Mauser here and I'm your go-to guy for all things hiking and gear. Now we've all invested in gear that we love, we've spent lots of money on it, but are we really looking after it the right way? Let's dive into the top mistakes that are secretly destroying your gear and how to avoid them. But first, quickly, if you've arrived at this video from another one of my videos, then please like, please subscribe, please hit the bell notification, weekly videos, we've got a newsletter too. Sign up to that here here, sign up to it there, and you'll be notified of when the next video occurs. But let's get straight into today's video, and let's look at how you might be destroying your gear. Let's go. So let's embark on this exploration of looking after your gear by starting with a key part of looking after your gear, and that is storage when you're not on the trail. Now, do you take into account where you store your gear when you're at home, when you're not hiking, when you're not out on the trail? This can have a significant effect on the life of your gear. Now, storing it somewhere too hot, for example, in the roof of your garage, somewhere like that, that can have detrimental effects on your gear, extreme heat. It's just like having it set up in the sun for days on end. If you store your gear in areas like this for prolonged periods, it can degrade the quality of your equipment faster than it would be if it was stored somewhere a bit cooler. And if you store it somewhere too cold, cold where there's moisture in the air then that can result in things like mold in things like condensation forming in the gear especially if you haven't dried it out properly and that can degrade the quality as well you really want to locate a dry temperate sort of space where you can store it ideally inside your house somewhere in a cupboard in a wardrobe somewhere where sort of there's regular regulation regulation of temperature now we've gone through it on a video before which you can see up there that is a video where i went into my gear storage scenario how i store all my gear if you don't have a room like that like i've got where i store my stuff you can just put it in a wardrobe you can put it sort of under a bed in a little tray or something like that but just find somewhere where it's going to sort of be well looked after not in direct sun not in direct heat and not in a place that's going to retain moisture and be too cold and on that note on a few specific items that you store when you're storing your gear we'll look first at sleeping bags now this can depend on the type of sleeping bag you are using but most of us are using down sleeping bags so that is what i am talking about here now how do you store your sleeping bag be honest with me be honest do you store it in its stuff sack do you leave it in the stuff sack up in the cupboard somewhere well that's got to change if you've been hiking for a while you would probably know that you need to store your down sleeping bag your down equipment loosely stuffed in like a big sack or hanging or somewhere like that where it's not compressed for long periods of time the practice of leaving it stuffed in a stuff sack leaving it compressed in a tight environment well what that does is it compresses the down and it can get to a point where if you leave it compressed too long the down will not re-loft and it won't have that fluffiness that insulating power that it previously had so what i've always done ever since i started hiking 30 years ago is i've always really looked after my down sleeping bag i have always either hung it over the back of a door had it hanging beside a wardrobe or a cupboard somewhere i normally these days just have it in the big bag most sleeping bags will come with a big storage bag and these days that is the practice i follow i store my sleeping bag when i'm not out on the trail actually i use a quilt now but the same rule applies i store my quilt in its big bag in a cupboard actually in my bedroom where i know it's going to not retain any moisture it sort of stays dry it stays lofted and my sleeping bags last for years and years and on that point you should also be washing your sleeping bag occasionally obviously depending on how much you are using it i generally don't like to take them to dry cleaners i prefer to wash them myself we will go into that on another video but basically the principle is you wash it with a down type of wash you can wash your sleeping bag and your gear i've done a down video before again up there on washing my down jacket same sort of thing applies to a sleeping bag you can wash it with a down wash in a front loading washing machine then you can Put it in a tumble dryer with a couple of tennis balls and on a gentle cycle and dry it that way in the past i have dried mine out on a big surface on a table or something like that under an air conditioner where it's gradually dried out over days declumping it these days i'm happy to use the tennis ball system on that video and again depending on how much you're using it i tend to wash my quilt or the sleeping bag that i'm using regularly once a year maybe twice a year if i'm using it heaps if you're not using it as often you can probably get away with doing it once a year once every two years but just look after your sleeping bag. It'll last you a long time. Oh, you're cool. Look after that too. It'll last you a long time if you are looking after it correctly. And again, with the theme of storage is another 
crucial bit of gear that you should be storing correctly, and that is your tent, your shelter, your home away from home. Now, a lot of people don't realize it, but storing your tent in its stuff sack for prolonged periods can have a similar effect to what sleeping bags experience when they are stored in their stuff sack. And while tents aren't made it down, obviously, the fact that you are storing your tent stuffed in its stuff sack compressed can result in creases forming in the material of the tent. And what that does is over time, it can degrade the material and and what will happen is the tent, those creases will become sort of permanent. So you get these creases forming and they can result in weak spots over time. And some say that it can result in tears, like the fabric tearing easier if it were to get some tension on it. And out of full transparency, I have generally stored my tents in their sacks. Lately, the last year or so with newer tents, I tend to store them loosely in a big tub, but it is a well-known sort of thing in the hiking community. You shouldn't stuff them in the stuff sacks, especially you shouldn't fold your tent when you are packing it away, storing it that way as well. I have never really folded mine. I tend to roll mine up so you don't really get creases forming and I haven't experienced that issue, but it is certainly something you should take into account. And again, never store a tent wet. The moment you get back from a trip, hang it up somewhere easily. Even just before you go and have a shower, pull your wet gear out, hang it up, store it, do that. It is so easy. You just come home, you pull it all out, even if it's just sitting around in the laundry, something like that, sitting around the living room, just get it out of there and let it start drying because the moment you store it for any length of time wet, it can result in some degradation. And if you store it too long, you'll get things like mold. And that is a whole different issue. Again, trying to get rid of mold off tents and sleeping bags and sleeping mats, it's just a nightmare. And often you can't get rid of it at all. And while we're on that note, let's talk about another bit of gear which moisture can affect. And that is, well, it's sitting right over there actually. It is your sleeping pad. Now with sleeping pads, back in the day, we always used to inflate them with our mouth when we could have inflatable ones. We used to have a flying pad, but you know, I'm not these days, I'm a luxury boy these days. We used to inflate them with our mouth and the issue you had there was that moisture from your breath, obviously, would get inside the mat and potentially result in mold forming inside the mat if you didn't store it or dry it out correctly at the end of a trip. Now, if you are still in that camp of inflating your mat by mouth, then I strongly suggest when you finish a trip that you leave it open with the valve open and hang it somewhere, hang it from a coat hanger, hang it over a door, hang it somewhere and let it really air out before you go rolling it up to store it. As you can see there, I like to store mine there in the studio. The flatter mats, the valves are open on them, so they're constantly drying. They're ones that I would have inflated with my mouth back in the day and they're, some of them are 20 years or older and they're still going strong, no mold issues. With the other ones, I leave them inflated for display while anything here. But if I'm gonna store them, I would generally, after a trip, leave them sitting somewhere or hanging somewhere with the valve open probably you know a few days at least and then i will loosely roll them so you don't get those creases and things forming i will loosely roll them up and just store them in a tub in my gear storage room and if you look after this stuff it really does last a long time like i just said i've had a couple of those mats for nearly 20 years they're all going to go for a long long time and if you look after them well they last forever almost nearly forever and if you can i highly recommend using a pump to inflate your sleeping mats we take one on every trip now i've said that before but it is a really good device it helps maintain your sleeping mat in its best condition you're using a pump you're not blowing it up uh, it also prevents you from getting you know a bit lightheaded and stuff if you are inflating by mouth that can occur but use the pump mouth's a tip right there and the last item i want to mention is another one that you need to store correctly and that is your water bladder if you're using a water bladder maybe you're using a soft flask maybe you're using a water bottle with all of these you need to store them correctly you can't just come home and chuck them in the cupboard all wet still you need to dry them out correctly you need to wash them out correctly to prevent mold forming now you may have had a moldy bladder before i back in the day i've always used bladders and i know that i have not cared for them always that well because they're one of those bits of equipment you just sort of throw to the side and worry about a bit later i'm more worried about looking after my sleeping bag and my sleeping mat and my tent but a bladder can easily form mold if you just leave it sitting there wet and don't give it a good rinse and wash out and don't dry it mold forms very easily now what i tend to do with my bladders is i give them a good rinse good wash out with soapy water warm soapy water at the end of a trip i then rinse it out thoroughly and then i will dry it out i normally try and you can get uh, hangers for water bladders these days that help you dry it out. But I seem, tend to dry it on a drying rack or something like that with it sort of puffed open. I'm, I'm able to get in a shape where it sort of sits open. It dries out in the air over a day maybe. And then I store it in my freezer to prevent any mold forming. And while to some it might sound a bit odd to be putting this dry water bladder in the freezer, it hasn't failed me yet. I've 
got bladders there that I've had for years. They are still perfectly fine. There's not a problem with them. They've never developed any mold. And I just pull them out of the freezer at the start of a trip. I put the tube in there, I put the bladder in there, and they really do last a long time if you look after them. And I've got many that are still going strong today. The last tip I do have is what I just mentioned before is that the moment you get home for a trip, unpack everything, hang up the sleeping bag, hang out the tent to dry, hang out your raincoat to dry, do all that stuff. Don't leave stuff still wet look after it, it will last you a long time. And if you follow these tips, I guarantee you, your gear is gonna last you four years. And if you're feeling inspired by this storage video, if you're liking the video, then check out that video where I go into how to clean your down jacket, as well as that one there where I go into how to clean your Gore-Tex. Check those ones out and I'll see you next time.